Hello everybody, this is Dr. Dave with Physics 150. I wanted to help everyone today understand RTZ um, coordinate system a little bit better. What is the RTZ coordinate system? It is a coordinate system that talks to us about how to do circular motion or even cylindrical motion. What do I mean by cylindrical motion? I mean you're going around in a circle and possibly up and down that cylinder. So think of a pop can or a water bottle or something like that. You can go around the water bottle and then up the water bottle. That's what RTZ is about. So there's a couple things that you have to get right when you're doing RTZ coordinate system. It just everything goes wrong if you don't get this correct. And the first is the radial direction. Many students will draw the radial direction on a circle coming outward from the center. That's wrong. That's going to give you the wrong signs. It's going to give you square roots of negative numbers. Your math is going to go really weird. So if you're solving a problem and you've got to take the square root of a negative number, something doesn't make sense to you, you probably have the radial coordinate in the wrong direction. So what does that mean? The radial coordinate is always going to point inward. Please, don't get this wrong. So if I'm looking at a circle here, and I'm looking at my radial coordinate system, the radial is always going to point inward from where I am. We call that the radial coordinate system, and then we often put a little hat on top to say it's a unit vector or a vector of length 1. Now what's a little bit different about this coordinate system than other coordinate system stuff that you dealt with before, is this coordinate system is constantly changing its direction. Why is that? Well, when we did like a parabolic coordinate system, we often just said, okay, here's my x, Here's my y. And if you think about that, everywhere you are, the acceleration direction is pointing downward. Like that's just gravity. Never changes direction. Well, in this circumstance, as you're going around the circle, we know that we have to keep accelerating perpendicular to our motion. That's our centripetal acceleration. That's what causes us to keep changing directions. So because the direction of acceleration keeps changing, our radial direction needs to keep changing as well. So we're really being consistent with what we've done before, though it does, I admit, look different. So that would be the, the radial vector at that point in space. When your object reached this point, your radial direction is now this way. When you reach this point, it's now that way. When you're here, it's now this way. So it's always pointing radially in towards the center of either your circle or the center of your curve. All right, so what's the next part of TZ? Tangential. So tangential, we always take to be in the direction of motion. So here we see the object is moving this way. We'll make that our tangential direction. So that'll be T. And then at the next location, we're still traveling in that direction. So that'll be my tangential coordinate system. And here, tangential coordinate system. At this point, there's my tangential coordinate system. Okay, so that T is pointing in the direction that I'm going at all locations. So tangent isn't too bad. Um, sometimes people will get confused about whether it should go in the direction of the velocity or opposite the direction of velocity. My advice is make it go in the direction of the velocity. Just keep your life uh, a little bit easier. All right, and then there's a third coordinate system, and that's Z. I sometimes call it the zenith direction, although that's not historically correct. It's just there was x and y, then they added z. But I think of zenith as something pointing straight upwards, pointing away from where I am. And so I find that as a helpful mnemonic. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that at this location right here, we have a third direction, right? Either we go up or we go down. Now we have what we have to learn is called the right-hand rule. Now it's very hard for me to explain to you how to use the right-hand rule. Um, over a video like this, so please take a look at your textbook. But I will tell you the right hand rule in this case says that the third direction should go into the page. So how do we denote what is into or out of the page in a way that we all understand? Well, we use what we call this arrow convention. And the arrow convention works as thus. We think of an arrow flying through the air. We've got a tip which would be coming at us. We would see a point or the flechettes, or the, the tail feathers going away from us, which we think of an X. So when we see just a dot coming out of the page, we think of that as out of the page. When we see an X, we think of something going into the page. So that's how we're going to denote the direction of our Z coordinates as well. So in this case, our Z coordinate system is going to go into the page, right there. And it's going to stay into the page at all of these locations. Now you might say, does it really matter if I get the z-coordinate system uh, wrong? And the truth is no, it really doesn't, as long as you're consistent. The thing you have to get correct about the z-coordinate system it has to be perpendicular to the previous two. All right. 
So another thing that makes circular motion a difficult thing for many students is that we have to consider multiple perspectives. What does that mean? You have to consider rotating an object. So if we're thinking about something going in circular motion in a horizontal circle. We're thinking, you know, from this view, we're sort of looking top down as we're watching it go around and around. You can think of it looking at the ground and something is going around and around in a circle. Well, now, what if you were to look at the side view? Like, so what if you were sitting over here, right, and this is, you know, where you are, and you're watching now, and you're seeing things from a side perspective? What's that going to look like? Well, here is our side view. So we would see it as a flat disk. And then at this point in time, what we would see is the velocity coming straight out towards us. Remember, the dot means out of the page. So this is a side view. And in many of the homework problems that we ask you to do, or any of the problems we ask you to do in terms of circular motion, we're going to expect that you consider multiple views. And sometimes you have to consider multiple views. So what is our RTZ in this coordinate system? Well, think about it the following. The radial is still going to be inward, right, because that never changes. It's always inward from our curve. Tangent is going to be in the direction of the velocity or in the direction the object's moving at that time. So tangent is going to be out of the page. Okay, And then z is going to be perpendicular to the two of those. So that is either going to be up or down. So in this case, the z direction is going to be down. And that's going to be consistent with this perspective here. I'm happy to help people understand the right-hand rule, uh, and office hours are one-on-one. -on -one. I just can't really imagine a way to try to do it in this short video. All right, so let's look at another case. Let's think about now a vertical circle. What do I mean by a vertical circle? Well, here I'm thinking of a Ferris wheel or something like that. And so you're now standing over the Ferris wheel. You know, this is a cloud view. You're looking down on the Ferris wheel, and a chair on this side is coming straight up towards you in the sky. And so now that my question is, what would it look like on the other side? What would the velocity look like right here? Well, if it comes up on this side, it's going to go down on that side. So there we go. So what are the coordinate systems here? What is the RTZ coordinate system here? Well, we start with R, which is easy. R is always inward, right? R is always inward. So then we have T. What's T going to be? T is going to be in the direction of motion. So I'm going to put a dot here and a T to say that's in the direction of motion which in the other case, because other side, now that I'm going into the page, I'll put my t here. And now I need a z. Now I admit the z is going to be a little hard, but I'll just give you the answer here. In this case, in what's called a right-handed coordinate system, the z is pointing in that direction. So now let's go to the side view of the vertical circle. So what is this view? This is somebody standing on the ground looking at the Ferris wheel. So now we draw our, our coordinate system again, perpendicular to the motion. We draw our T coordinate system in the direction of the motion. And then our Z is a little bit harder to see. In this case, Z is into the page. We get up to the top here. R, again, would be into the page. T would be this way. And then Z would be into the page. Okay. Move around to the next location. R is this way. T is this way. Z direction, again, is into the page. If you um, have trouble with the right-handed rule, please do uh, ask us one-on-one, -on -one and we'll be happy to help you with this. So this has been a very quick video on what is the RTZ coordinate system. Um, the reason we care about this is in circular motion, we have acceleration conditions that are on our radial direction. And that is, when you want to have an object be in circular motion, a radial, which is the same thing as a centripetal, is forced to be equal to the tangential speed squared divided by the radius of the curve. So you have to be really careful when looking at this. Is this is a radial or a centripetal? This is not, I repeat, not a tangential. A tangential is the acceleration we've had always in the past. So when we're summing our forces in an RTZ coordinate system, when we sum our forces radially, we're going to you know, get our list of forces that we add up, you know, force 1 plus force 2, etc. And then we're going to use Newton's second law to set it equal to ma radial, which, because of circular motion, is the same thing as setting it equal to mv squared by r. We do really want to see on your papers this step. We do not want to see this list equal to this. We want to see you break it down that it's always MA because circular, you know, because you're in a circle, 
It's the following answer. All right, thanks for watching today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.